So they don't have to say much to get this stock going higher, but I don't think they're going to have that much good to say. So if you're long the stock and you're thinking about how do I stay long this but protect myself, I just want to look at the charts really quickly here. The one year. Meantime, as we mentioned, uh, Tesla is going to report tonight after the bell. Off to a rough start for the year so far. Our Phil Lebeau is here to talk about what we might expect. Uh, some key areas that uh, the street's looking for some clarity on, Phil. The, the one number that everybody's going to be focused on, Carl, and we talk about it every quarter. Uh, but we'll see. You know, we know Tesla's coming off. Uh, well, Q4 was a record quarter in terms of vehicle production and sales. And uh, the company has a really solid uh, earnings track record. They've only missed once in the, in the past <coughs> 11 quarters. So uh, we're bullish on Tesla heading into this release. Uh, the stock's had a nice dip. Uh, so far this year after the stock more than doubled last year, uh, which we view as healthy price action, uh, given the massive run up that it had in 2023. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to probably do the number. I mean, there's certainly a lot of analysts who work on these numbers, and Tesla gives us how many cars they've sold in advance. So, it, you know, there's usually some wiggle room around, you know, foreign exchange and credits and things. But but we, we don't expect a huge beat by any means, and, and nor would there be any impetus to that. So what we're really hoping for is not a miss, and, and that's really my concern because, obviously, they've been having to discount and throw lots of incentives to sell the cars that they're making. So so that's what we're really hoping is just that they beat the number and, and you know, it's a solid quarter. And then, and then there were six. Ooh, that's how I'm feeling about the magnificent ones. The seven stocks reminded people of the fabulous movie where seven of our most badass gunfighters went to Mexico to save a village from some cynical, vicious bandits. But that little Magnificent Seven moniker may have reached the end, the end of the line, because alas, not all seven are still magnificent. I think it's time to accept that Tesla has been shot. Not unlike Harry Locke, the first come fighter to go down in the movie. And we either need to rename the group or perhaps the Super Six, maybe. Speaking of deflation, Kathy, uh, Tesla has been cutting prices on cars. Investors have been cutting Tesla's stock price. You bought Tesla last year when it was cheaper than this. I think you bought some more, a good chunk, a little bit more than a week ago. Do you keep buying it as it goes down, if it continues to go down this year? Uh, you'll see that we've been trading uh, Tesla at the margin. So uh, when it is uh, soaring and everybody's excited about the good news, as we move towards electric vehicles, we will take profits. And likewise, as, uh, as investors and traders begin to fear that we're going to be in an air pocket, uh, you know, we've got a five-year investment time horizon, and we think uh, that in five years, most car sales will be electric. In the world of electric vehicles, very few names stir up as much excitement and controversy as Tesla. And as we approach the latest earnings call, there's a palpable mix of anticipation and anxiety among investors, analysts and enthusiasts alike. Will Tesla record a new set of interesting numbers for its Q4 earnings, or will it fall short of predictions and forecasts? These are some of the interesting questions that we're going to find answers to. So buckle up and get ready for some moments of discovery. Uh, the board. We haven't heard from them. We're waiting to hear a lot of people on this board, but it's rare that they've ever, if ever, swatted down Elon Musk. Charlie Gasparino makes this point all the time. The Tesla board does not rein him in. Granted, over the past several years, why should they? The stock has done incredibly well, but right now the question is, should he be given such a huge chunk of power? And he says, if you don't give it to me, then I will develop my, my AI ideas somewhere else other than Tesla. Yeah, so the board is his friends and family. So, you know, I've never seen a board more conflicted than Tesla. And they just settled a lawsuit where they were so overcompensated, they are having to give back $750 million of overcompensation that they settled in this lawsuit. And Elon's pay package himself is worth $50 billion today which you would think would incentivize any human on earth, right? So when you look at his pay package plus his stake, it's closer to 20% of the stock, and he fully controls the board. And what he's basically saying is, I want you to give me like 30 to 50 billion of compensation more for me to do my fiduciary responsibility <laughs> to the company. So there's never I'll been a more delusional CEO that I've ever invested with. That's a big statement. 
Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Like 50 billion isn't enough to motivate somebody? Today's video delves deep into the nuanced details of Tesla's financial health, dissecting the factors that could influence the stock performance in the wake of its earnings announcement. As we seek the answers to the plethora of questions about Tesla earnings, we'll also explore speculation, expectations, and the potential impact of Musk's words and actions, offering a comprehensive analysis for those vested in Tesla's journey, Tesla bulls and analysts alike. So join us as we navigate through the complexities of Tesla's financial narratives, unraveling the layers of investor sentiment, market trends, and strategic decisions that all define this innovative giant. Difficult run from a fundamental standpoint over the last three quarters. The day after earnings, the stock has sold off 9%. So when you think about that, heading into the print, we have a NASDAQ at all-time high, an S&P at all-time high. We have all the mags six, uh, making highs, you know, this has gone the opposite way. So uh, if I think about this, it's a hard press on the short side here, right? So they don't have to say much to get this stock going higher, but I don't think they're going to have that much good to say. So if you're long the stock and you're thinking about how do I stay along this but protect myself, I just want to look at the charts really quickly here. The one year you see this uptrend, you see that 205 level, I don't think you want to be long below that if it were to break below that. Look at it on a longer term basis here and you say to yourself, and guys, been highlighting this pennant formation that's been in place. Really difficult spot. It's below that longer term uptrend to me. So you want protection if you're long into this print. I would look to collar your stock. So today, the stock about 209 versus 100 shares long the stock. You could look at February expiration and sell one of the 230 calls that expires there at about $4.40 in February. You could use the proceeds and look down in February expiration by one of the 192 half puts for four dollars and forty cents it cost and then and then there were six Ooh, that's how i'm feeling about the magnificent ones the seven stocks reminded people of the fabulous movie where seven of our most badass gunfighters went to mexico to save a village from some cynical vicious bandits but that little magnificent seven moniker may have reached the end the end of the line because alas not all seven are still magnificent i think it's time to accept that tesla has been shot. Not unlike Harry Locke, the first cum fighter to go down in the movie. And we either need to rename the group or perhaps the Super Six, maybe? Or search for a replacement. Get a seventh. Yep, on a sedate day where the market, I don't know, was down gain 138 points, as be advanced 0.22%, both to record highs, NASDAQ climbed 0.32%. I think it's time that we think for a magnificent reshuffle. And I don't do this easily, because you know I respect the work. With the electric vehicle market at a crucial juncture and Tesla at its forefront, understanding the dynamics of Tesla's financials is more important than ever. As Tesla gears up for its earnings call, the atmosphere is tinged with a sense of apprehension, and past earnings calls have been a roller coaster ride for Tesla stock, often influenced by CEO Elon Musk's remarks. And this time around, the speculation is rife with a variety of predictions and concerns. What could be ahead for Tesla, this revolutionary automaker? and its market. Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Tesla Tomorrow. There are a few reasons behind the heightened anticipation about Tesla's Q4 earnings. First up, the lingering memory of the Q3 results, which deviated from the norm, leaving investors wary. And also, there's the looming anxiety over Tesla's growth trajectory. Uh, incentives, let's just cut to the chase. That is price cuts. They're trying to juice the number, and they have done well. They had just reported record uh, deliveries, record, del yeah, Q4, record deliveries, an uh, incredible number here. But at what cost? That's what shareholders right. are probably asking you right now through the TV set. Right. And, and, and this is what I'm trying to explain to people. See, Tesla is working on a dynamic pricing model where they don't make any effort to increase demand. And it looks like the way they're trying to increase demand is by doing some sort of world tour for the Cybertruck, even though they don't have Cybertrucks to sell people yet, and maybe not for a while. And so, you know, they're trying to goose other sales by using the Cybertruck, but they just need to advertise like every other car maker, you know, on the football game, you know, like the 49ers game had the highest ratings ever and all the other car companies are advertising except Tesla. So people don't know anything about EVs and we've seen a lot of FUD about the cold weather and Tesla makes no effort 
to counter this. So this is what hurts them when they make more cars, they have to lower prices to sell them mm. because essentially they're not creating any new demand. And most of the EV buyers who want an EV have bought an EV. So, so I don't see where Tesla goes from a sense of earnings. So they'll sell more cars, but I don't see how they make more money doing that with their current strategy. The stock over the past six months has lost about 22%, but there's a different time point on the sort of rearview mirror, and that is that around November 15th of last year, the CEO, Elon Musk, began promoting or amplifying anti-Semitic posts that are on X the platform he owns, formerly known as Twitter. Since then, the stock has dropped about 13 percent. And a lot of people say, you know, what he is speaks so loudly that they can't hear what he is saying. Well, what he's saying also speaks very loudly. What are you hearing from your clients who have accounts with Gerber Kawasaki and also the clients who own Tesla's? Right. And, and I do have to stress, we have thousands of clients at Gerber Kawasaki on top of our fund, GK, and which also has many clients. And so, you know, most of our clients have Tesla. So it affects a lot of people. But when you put up that chart about Tesla's performance, what you didn't show is that the market has actually taken off since that date. So relative to other tech stocks, Tesla's vastly underperformed since Elon has taken such outspoken and, and, in my mind, you know, controversial and negative views. And by doing that, many of my clients, and I tweeted this several months ago, you know, were furious and sold their stock. And now it turns out that that was probably a good move mm. because the stock is much lower from then. And as a firm, we've been forced to lower our allocation to Tesla because as we've really? seen the problems mount and the solutions that we see not being implemented, we've had to be prudent investors for our clients and understand that the story has changed. Well, the Tesla story is not the same. The possibility of falling significantly behind the previously achieved 35% growth rate, potentially dipping into the 20s, has got stakeholders on edge. Such a decline would not align with the ambitious targets that Tesla set for itself and could possibly impact Tesla investors' confidence. Moreover, the tone of the call is still under scrutiny. There's a sense of sarcasm and skepticism within Tesla's community, as illustrated by Tesla fan and humorist. James Katz predictions. The Tesla bull expects Musk to touch on a range of topics, from the challenges of production to the potential of Tesla's autonomy technology, and even bold comparisons to industry giants like Apple and Saudi Aramco. These comments from James Katz reflect the undercurrent of doubt and expectations surrounding Musk's statements, and further heighten the anticipation surrounding Tesla's Q4 expected earnings call. As the call approaches, the diverse sentiments from analysts encapsulate the complex dynamics at play with Tesla's ecosystem, and investors and fans alike are bracing for a call that could sway Tesla's narrative in either direction. So what's it going to be? Will Tesla underperform, or is it going to have another remarkable quarter? Keep watching to find out, but before we carry on though, if you like this type of content, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to keep up to date on everything going on with Tesla. The upcoming Tesla earnings report is more than just a financial summary, but a complex narrative intertwining with market expectations, strategic decisions, and future projects. Even noted analysts like Gary Black have provided insight into the forecast that help understand the potential outcomes of this event. Black, a prominent voice in investment communities, has focused on Tesla's 2023 volume guidance, an essential indicator of a company's growth trajectory. Last year's fourth quarter's earnings deck set ambitious targets, reflecting Tesla's aggressive growth plans, and Gary Black had a sentiment that seems to anticipate a similar language in the upcoming report, with a nod to the 50% long-term production growth target that dates back to 2020. However, he also injected a dose of realism by suggesting that due to economic headwinds and higher interest rates, the 2024 delivery numbers might fall below this long-term target. This is a crucial point as it balances optimism with the challenges posed by the economic climate at the moment. Tesla's Q4 earnings report is expected to indicate a full year 2024 production target around 2.2 million vehicles. This figure is slightly conservative compared to Black's 2.58 million estimation, but aligns with Tesla's historical growth patterns and current market conditions. It is important to note that while clear and achievable targets could bolster investor confidence, ambiguity or oversimplistic projections could have 
some more skepticism applied to them, especially optimistic ones too, and we don't want that. As we move towards electric vehicles, we will take profits. And likewise, as uh, as investors and traders begin to fear that we're going to be in an air pocket, uh, you know, we've got a five-year investment time horizon, and we think uh, that in five years, most car sales will be electric. Uh, and uh, that is a trend that lower prices actually are going to encourage. So that's the uh, good deflation, as we've got uh, electric drivetrain prices coming down okay. uh, uh, in price, Tesla can price down. It can price down if we're in a weak spot globally, and it does appear that we are, certainly China and uh, Europe. Uh, and even here in the United States. Well, let me challenge you there. Forward. Let me challenge you there with what Hertz just did, backing away from EVs, saying, yeah, I mean, people really love Teslas. That's not translating into uh, how much Teslas cost to repair and maintain and the viability of them maintaining a fleet. So I understand that you're trading around it now, but for the people at home who don't necessarily do that day by day, Where's your your even mark uh, where if it goes below here, that's when you're really pushing into it, leaning into it? Well, uh, we cannot talk about what we are going to do pros uh, uh, prospectively. Um, but just to address Hertz, um, there is a learning curve with EVs. And I think a lot of people go to Hertz and say, I'm going to try my uh, first EV. And they learn, OK, if you're going to drive uh, you know, uh, 50 miles or 100 miles, you've got to start thinking about uh, charging. So a bit of a learning curve. It is true that the repairs, uh, the repairs cost more, but maintenance also costs 60 percent less. So there's a bit of a trade off. If you listen to Uber, on the other hand, uh, Dara will tell you that they're encouraging more of their drivers to rent from uh, Hertz and others uh, because the, the, the drivers get more. Uh, Uber's take rate is not more, so it is really beneficial for drivers, and consumers love them. They're willing to pay up. So, uh, you know, when innovation is evolving and the infrastructure is moving into place, but not quite there, especially in terms of repairs, you're going to go through fits and starts like this. But the trend is undeniable. Okay. Last year, last year, electric vehicle sales globally were up 28 percent, while uh, gas powered vehicle sales were up 9 percent. So share gain still. There's also been a movement in Tesla's stock price after every earnings call, usually because of investors' expectations. Also, Musk's historical pattern of impacting stock prices during calls has been a double-edged sword. While the CEO's comments tend to age well, they sometimes cause immediate dips in Tesla's stock price. The balance Tesla needs to strike in this earnings call is clear. Offer realistic guidance that reassures investors of continued growth despite macroeconomic challenges. The fact remains that as much as investors may want to stay bullish on Tesla, a stable margin outlook for 2024, particularly in the face of pricing strategies and cost management, is going to be key for investor sentiment. It could show what Tesla's true valuation is. And what is your take on, I mean, we, we sort of read a, a litany of, uh, of headlines recently, including this Hertz news um, around selling some of these vehicles and the like. Do you look at that and say, I mean, I, part of you I hear is saying this is an opportunity in terms of the, just the price fall, but do you think there's a larger macro headwind challenge to, to Tesla and or is it just or is it the EVs and Tesla's excluded? Is it, is it idiosyncratic? How do you think about that? There's no question that the U.S. EV market is in a state of oversaturation today. Um, but the good news is that if you look at the EV price premium, so uh, the premium at which EVs sell to to the average of uh, all vehicles, in December, that premium was only 4%, down from over 30% a year ago. So EVs are coming down in price much closer to parity with, uh, with gas-powered vehicles. And so... Um, we think, you know, really the market oversaturation, the issue is more with non-Tesla EVs. That's real, where the uh, demand problem is. And, and in December, inventories were at 114 days supply for EVs overall. That's extremely high because the historic average uh, in, term, in terms of day supply 
uh, in the U.S. is about 60 days. So, But we view that more as a problem for uh, non-Tesla EVs. We know demand is very strong for the for the Cybertruck, and they face a high-class problem, which is how quickly can they produce these vehicles and get them in the hands of reservation holders. Well, Garrett, that's a, that, that's a, I've heard it a million times. People don't jones for a EV, they jones for a Tesla. They don't, they don't, they don't say, I want an EV. They say, I want a Tesla. When did, does that ever change? What, what would that take for, to say, I want, what's GM? I don't even know what they make. I, I, they make those things you can't park near your house. What's that called? A Volt or a Bolt or, 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 or something. Uh, what, what's the most popular big three EV? Has anyone bought one? Tesla's still the dominant player. No. There's also a huge contrast between investors' expectations and Tesla's earnings or delivery numbers. And we think that this is something investors have got to pay attention to as Tesla draws closer to its Q4 earnings report. Investors have got to realize that the focus of Tesla's earnings report isn't merely on the numbers, but the story they tell for investors and companies' resilience, ability to have a clear vision for the future in an increasingly competitive and challenging market, and many other factors. As we look beyond the immediate ramifications of the earnings call, Tesla's future projections and market sentiments become a focal point. The car company's ambitious goal to make 3 million cars next year, as mentioned by Brian White, speaks volumes about the growth aspirations, although its feasibility of achieving this target amid existing capacity and market dynamics is subject to debate among analysts and investors. Overall, Tesla's earnings call is far more than just a financial summary. It's a litmus test of a company's current health and future potential. The analysis reveals a company at a crossroads, balancing ambitious growth targets with market realities. It's a known fact that Tesla's ability to manage production costs, pricing strategies, and innovation is all going to be critical in maintaining market dominance. As the electric vehicle landscape evolves, Tesla continues to be a bellwether, with its success and challenges resonating across the industry. Therefore, the upcoming earnings call is not only going to shape investor sentiment, but also offer insight into Tesla's strategic trajectory in an increasingly competitive and dynamic market. But what do you think about this Q4 earnings report? And will Tesla outperform analysts' expectations and forecasts? Let us know. And if you want to know more about what Tesla's been up to over the last few days, go ahead and click on this next video on your screen. See you there.